Good morning, everyone. We have a couple more minutes before we get started. All right, good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Joanne Vernon. I've been, um, if you've been joining us over the last couple of weeks, I have been um, the presenter. However, today I wanted to introduce to you uh, Lisa Collins. She's the director of our broker concierge um, team. And I really wanted her to be able to do this presentation. I've heard her speak a couple of times um, on this particular CE and the knowledge and the passion that she has for the technology piece of our industry. Um, I felt like she would be the best um, person. So everyone will welcome Lisa to our CE this morning. Thanks, Joanne. Appreciate it. So to, before we begin, um, as Joanne said, I, I am passionate about this topic. Certainly, I think there is so much opportunity for brokers to engage with technology to grow their book of business, love to share that type of information. Um, and we put it into CE format, so it also will benefit you in that way as well. So just a couple housekeeping items before we get started. This has been approved for, for one life and health CE in Arizona. And as we always say, you need to pay attention throughout. You can't conduct any other business. We actually will um, post three poll questions throughout this presentation. And the poll questions, you don't have to get them right, but you do have to answer them in order to get you the CE credit. Um, earlier today, you should have received an email with a sign-in and a sign-out sheet. Please get that completed afterwards and email back into concierge at primepay.com. Um, I did indicate that in the email. That, in addition to your poll questions that are answered, will, um, will provide you with a course completion certificate um, by email as well. Just to review what we're gonna talk about today, just a high level overview of the employee benefit technology, what we're seeing, what has transpired. Um, we're gonna talk about really what is driving that change. There's several factors, so we're gonna delve into each one of those factors for a little bit. We'll also discuss some technology trends, what we're seeing, where things are going and how you can incorporate technology in your business, as I said, to not only retain your current clients, um, because so many clients are expecting or requesting this, but also use it as a prospecting tool to gain new clients and also to help you move up market. And then I, I like to take a look at the competitive landscape. There's a lot going on in this area, and I think it's really important to understand it's changing constantly. I just added something this morning to share with you. Um, so it is always changing, and you kind of have to keep your eye on that. And then we'll end up with just talking about how to transform your agency using these uh, technology options. So let's take a look at kind of where things have been, where things are today, and where things are going. Um, I've been in this business for, I hate to even say it, almost 30 years now. And way back when, I was using technology. And back then, I worked for a very large company, so they could afford a very expensive system. And I am not really a IT or technology person. And I remember back then, 
struggling with just getting a report out of the system. I actually had to, like in a browser area, write code just to produce a report. There was nothing standard. There was nothing click of the buttons. It was very expensive. It was very technical. I needed IT support. And as I said, I worked for a larger company, and that's why we had it. Smaller companies had absolutely no resources or access to that. Today, it is very different. SaaS, or Software as a Service, has completely changed the industry. It is really cloud-based. And when we say cloud-based, it essentially is not software that somebody comes to your office and loads it on your computer, but it is accessible online. So cloud-based, all the data is housed on remote servers, servers that you don't own or um, it's just, you know, pri uh, companies that have these huge data warehouses of servers to maintain them. A lot of these um, types of solutions that are available today are subscription-based. So you are paying a subscription, usually it's annually, very affordable, I may add, and that subscription will keep things updated for you. So if there's a change within the software, um, it's automatically online. You automatically have access to it. It's not like you have to download new software or somebody has to show up at your office and make some changes. We are moving to really an all-in-one solution. So many of these uh, systems have started out maybe just as a Ben Admin platform, so enrollment or benefit administration. But now we're seeing really a convergence of HR functionality, payroll functionality. So integration of different systems working together to give you best in class. So you may have a payroll company that's integrated with a Ben Admin platform, and that provides more of a total solution for you. That's really where we are today. Um, it is very affordable. Um, we have many brokers that have licensed different software um, and providing it to their clients for free. We'll kind of talk about that in, in a little bit as well. And the beauty of it is any size group can use it. You don't need the resources. They, Your clients don't need the resources. You can have one person that's not very uh, technically um, astute and be able to work with this very easily. So it's made it very user-friendly and affordable. What we're looking for in the future, and really when I say future, it moves so qu quickly. So we're talking about you know almost today. We're seeing APIs, uh, so integration with real-time data exchange happening a lot. We're seeing it primarily in payroll, but we're hearing you know carriers and different um, uh, third-party administrators actually moving towards this too. So APIs will be commonplace. They will, will no longer be file feeds or overnight file feeds or weekly file feeds. It will be real-time data exchange. You'll have better AI. So artificial intelligence is becoming mainstream. So if you think of yourself, your, just your experience with Amazon, you shop for certain things, it will make recommendations. It looks at your browsing history. Um, so that we'll see more and more of that within the benefit space as well. More customization, easier customization, simple to do so it is meeting your client's needs based on their HR, payroll, and then admin needs. Personalization, so decision support and personalization together, helping employees understand what benefits are and what benefits best fit their lifestyle or their life situation at the time. And of course, everything's mobile today, but really that 365 engagement, real time, anytime, all the time employee engagement. Let's talk about too, really where we're seeing more of the HR um, um, in integrations and digitalization. So Guardian Workplace Benefit Studies, they do one every year. And if you haven't seen it, just Google it. It is a really great study. It provides a lot of insight and technology. But as a highlight, the study, the most recent study shared that 45% of small businesses anticipate or expect to increase their um, HR technology um, spend 
since 2015. So that's a big bump increase. The, mo the three most common functions that are um, technology-based or digitalized is payroll being, look at that number, 72% online. Benefit enrollment coming second and benefit administration coming third. So you're primarily, you know, when talking to brokers, focus on the Ben admin and the Ben enrollment. But look at your clients, their number one of what they're saying is payroll. So important. And then the rest of them here, learning and development, performance management, recruiting and onboarding all came into the study. All right, we're going to talk about what's driving the technology change. We're going to delve into each one of these areas a little bit, but wanted to give you an overview first. Workforce changes. We're going to talk about what the workforce, how it's changing, what it looks like, and why it's driving that technology um, demand. Compliance requirements are becoming really intense for your groups. Um, Employers are demanding technology, so they're asking you, they're coming to you asking for these types of solutions. The SaaS-based model, making it more affordable, accessible, easy to use. And we're going to really get into some competition. And that competition, the DTE stands for direct to employer, so not a broker delivering technology, but an outside company, and actually in many situations replacing you, the role of the broker. Bottom line, brokers, you must get involved with technology to remain relevant, and not only selecting a solution, but really engaging with it, getting your clients involved, and utilizing it. 53% of the brokers in that study agreed that success, both for themselves and their clients, is directly tied to innovation through different technology solutions. So over half of the brokers feel this way. We're going to go to our first poll question here. And again, remember, you need to answer this poll question in order to um, get your credits. Hold on one second. Launch the first one here. Sorry about that. I got to the different. All right, so what are the three top HR functions that are digitized? I'm going to launch that now, and I am going to give you about 30 seconds. The first one's payroll, benefit enrollment, and benefit administration. The second one's payroll, onboarding, and recruiting. And the third one is payroll, learning, performance management. have about mm, so 78 percent that have voted so I'm going to give it a couple more seconds here okay and I'm going to go ahead and close it out everybody got that right payroll benefit enrollment and Ben admin are your top three so important to remember that because that will help in um, guiding you what technology is best fit for your clients. So as I said, we're going to delve into each one of these areas of what really is causing this um, benefit technology um, focus. The number one thing is the workforce. The workforce today is really quite different than it has ever been before because what we're seeing is that there's we have three generations here listed, but I almost would argue there may even be four generations in the workforce. And if you think about it, somebody just entering the workforce has very different needs than somebody that is retiring out of the workforce. Not only that, as far as their benefit needs, but think about how they learn differently. A younger employee expects to learn most likely online or through a mobile app. They communicate differently. Everything is through technology, the communication. So maybe your tried and true old traditional way where you put together an open enrollment packet and you mail it out, that no longer really is applicable. Maybe for some they still expect that. 
But what we really want to do is be able to accommodate all generations and how they communicate and how they receive information and how they're educated. So if you have varying um, ways, online, paper, emails, enrollment meetings, you're going to really um, meet the needs of that entire workforce. Flexible benefit programs. Again, as I said, each generation is very different in their benefit need. As a new employee just coming out of college, I'm strapped with student loans. So financial is a real key to repaying those student loans. Maybe I'm still covered under my parents' health care because I'm not 26 yet, so that's not as much of a focus. Where if you're aging out, you're getting close to retirement, your medical is really important in your retirement. So why not give them a complete, robust benefit program that they can personalize for themselves and make the selections best to fit their needs. So what that does, it not only helps retain the employees, but it also will help attract new talent. And the labor market is so tight right now that the better the benefit um, package, the better um, position the employer is in to attract new hires. Employee self-serve. Again, a lot of employees just expect to do things on their own, online or through a mobile app. I just, let's say, finished my taxes and I owed. I just want to go online and change my tax deductions. Or um, I just had a baby. I want to add the baby to my policy. Easy to do with employee self-serve. So it really is immediate access to everything in one place. Again, think of it not just at a, as a benefit enrollment platform, but for everything. So I may want access my benefit summaries. I want to see my summary plan description. I need to review that policy in the employee handbook on a certain subject. It gives employees one place for everything, and it also helps HR in the same capacity where they can house everything in one place. Compliance. Whew, compliance is really becoming so complex. Um, and ACA was a game changer for that. Um, not only did we have ERISA for years, I think for, for more than ever, ERISA is becoming more focused on just because ACA brought to, to the forefront all these different compliance requirements. And if you think about it, sometimes it's even hard to understand for your employers what laws and regulations they really need to follow because they may be on the cusp of um, a certain size group. So for example, COBRA is 20 employees, ACA is 50 employees, FMLA is 50 employees, but each one of those has a different way they're counting employees and part-timers. So having that access to payroll data, which is the most accurate for this, and integrating it into these technology solutions makes that third bullet point, just understanding what requirements based on the company size, much easier. Data really is, you know, I used to just say cash is king, you know, we've all heard that, but today data is king. Data is key for mitigating uh, your compliance risks. Not only understanding what size group, but think of ACA. Something as seems so straightforward as full-time, part-time, but you have variable hour employees. So you really need to understand the hours employees are working, if they're eligible for benefits or not, uh, the measurement periods, um, the, all the different reporting requirements and documentation requirements. Um, being able to, in an audit, prove that you sent out the qualifying event letters and the initial rights notices, or you provided the a uh, summary plan description to the employees or the handbook. With technology, you can get um, e-signatures, digitized signatures, uh, and prove that you, all of this is accessible to the employees online. So much simpler as well. Many times in talking to um, brokers, they come to us and they say, you know, we need a solution for this because they know we've got different integrated solutions. And I so often hear the reason that they're asking for this is because their employer requested it. It wasn't that they were being proactive about it. It was like, whew, I had a client and they're asking me for this. Can you help me deliver it? 
There was a study done um, in 2018, uh, Maestro Health. It was an independent, they got an independent third party to handle the study, and it was on uh, broker tech trends. And they came up with the top five challenges that the employers are facing. So this was an employer survey. Remaining compliant was number one. Maximizing benefit offerings, reducing administrative and or benefit costs, Employ, improving the employee retention and or satisfaction, and improving employee wellness. And the wellness is not only defined as health wellness, but also financial wellness. So taking a look at this, you can see that technology solutions and integrating different systems together can resolve and answer all of these challenges your clients are facing. The competition, we'll get into this a little bit deeper, uh, a little further on, but um, it's just you know one of the, the five that we're mentioning here. So today, as a broker, and I shouldn't call it broker, I should say really consultant, if you have not moved from brokering products and selling products into more of an advisor or consultant role, somebody else will come to your clients and, and do that um, on your behalf and you will lose the VOR. It no longer is spreadsheet, and you guys know this, it's no longer spreadsheeting um, and only coming up with rates. It's really important to understand what's available. So not only in those, your, your job is so difficult today, not only in the health insurance industry where maybe you're talking about reference-based pricing or direct primary care and all these self-funded, these different options, but you also need to understand technology and know what solutions are out there for your clients. So you're advising on different business solutions. Insurance today is a commodity, and you can also thank ACA for that as well. The price is the price is the price. Um, so no longer focus on the product, but really focus on solving your clients' business concerns. Uh, many of the brokers that I work with, and this is across the country, so it's, you know, although benefits are regional, I will say that this is consistent regardless of where you're doing, um, where you're running your business. You must solve your client's business concerns. So if you're trying to get a BOR and you're in there just saying, I can get you cheaper um, insurance and showing the rates, if that's the beginning of your conversation, you're missing the boat. And the reason I say that is the, the most successful brokers, I always ask them what their business model is, what they're doing, and they just simply, we start off with a business conversation. How are you handling recruiting? What's your biggest concern? How are you handling your compliance? Just those big conversations and then narrowing them uh, down. Consolidation of agencies. Many agencies are merging with larger agencies, and those agencies have deep pockets. They have more resources and tools. So that is your competition. Um, technology startups, and I'm going to give you an example of a couple that are playing the broker role. And it's not just the benefits that we all know the story. There are many others out there. So they use the BOR. They use the commissions in the product to um, pay for the technology solutions. Another common question that I'll ask our broker partners is what differentiates you from other brokers? And almost without fail, the number one thing I hear is service. So your prospects that you're trying to win business, if you're saying service, you're not telling them anything different than all the rest of the brokers are out there. So you really need to figure out what your differentiator is, and that's much easier with technology solutions um, and in beating out your competition. Some of the uh, technology and HR trends, we've talked about some of these already. Everything is in the cloud. If a technology solution does not have a mobile app, they are not current with what you need to have today. That is expected and it is a must. All in one solution. So even though it may be different systems, your, your clients are expecting one solution, one place to go to share the data, payroll, HR, and benefits, and be able to access anywhere at any time. The personalization is getting better and better. 
Um, you know, how many times are you on a website and that, that chat bot comes up and then how can I help you? That AI, that automation, that machine learning, that's really, that is probably the most rapid growth of what we see right now. And that will improve and it will help employees understand their benefits and make the right benefit selection. By integrating the different systems, that all-in-one system that I was talking about, you can truly deliver best in class. So you can choose the best payroll company based on your client's needs. Maybe they have really advanced needs and one payroll company is better suited than another. Maybe you need a, um, a TPA that can get very creative in HRA and HSA plan designs and stacking plans together. So you can truly fit best in class if you have these different integrations and uh, sharing the data amongst these different systems. API is becoming the standard. That is the real-time data exchange. So look for APIs when you are looking for a solution for your clients. The wearables are becoming more and more important. Um, gosh, the Apple iWatch, it can, you know, have your heart rate monitored. I mean, it's just, it's amazing what it can do. Telehealth, telemedicine, cost containment um, resources, that, that's commonplace today. They are delivering medical care through technology, through the cameras on the phone, um, just really amazing stuff that's, that's happening. And the health and financial wellness, as I spoke about, really um, health um, and financial wellness, if, if there are issues in these areas, your employees are spending time away from work, not fully engaged in work because of these stresses that they have. So helping with that stress reduction is key, and there's a lot of technology solutions out there to deliver that. Even something as simple as mobile apps, meditation, things of that nature. Technology trends, we talked about big data. So I'm going to simplify. I mean, big data sounds like um, something that is beyond what a small company needs, but think about designing a benefit program. You need data to design an effective benefit program for any size group. I need to understand the workforce dynamics. So what's the average age of the group? What's the average salary? Are there more males than females? Truly understanding what that group is comprised of will help you make recommendations to the benefit program. Do you have enough life insurance coverage for the employee base? Is the disability, the monthly um, maximum, is that sufficient to cover um, you know, the compensation of, of the group? Analyze your book of business. If you've got all your clients on any of these technology platforms, and you may not even roll it out to a company, but you're managing the data through one of these systems, you can also benchmark with many of the systems. So take a look at, Okay, on average, my the groups that have an HSA, the average employer contribution is this, the average employee contribution is this. What's the average premium contribution? So benchmarking your own book of business is also can be very um, useful and very easy to do if you've got all of your clients on the system. So just don't think of it as an enrollment platform or something that your clients absolutely need to use. Make sure that you know, you're using it effectively and you're using it um, wisely. So let's get to this second poll question. What is not causing technology momentum? So this is kind of a funny question, but employer demand, workforce, compliance, carrier requirement. What is not causing that technology momentum? Okay, that's an easy one. Um, it's certainly it, it's it's carrier requirement, right? I mean, the carriers we would all love if they were as far along as some of these Ben Admin and um, Ben benefit administration systems, a lot of times they're the ones that are holding things back. So uh, it would be carrier requirement. Close this out and continue on here. Okay, 
So we're going to talk about incorporating technology. We're going to talk about the three areas that I continually have mentioned throughout this presentation, the HR, the benefit services, and the payroll. Let's start with benefit administration because that's probably top of mind for you. It does, without any doubt, it provides more seamless administration if you have data feeds. Now, the data feeds could be an API real time. It could be a file feed where it's happening daily, overnight, weekly. Um, regardless, you're not having to um, enter data in multiple systems. Think of something as simple as an address change. Today, if a company has, a, an employee has an address change, the person's got to go into payroll, update it. There's tax forms to be updated. They need to go into the COBRA system to update the address. So if they term or if there is another qualifying event, the letter goes out to the appropriate address. Every single carrier needs to be notified. So something as simple as that, there are multiple systems touch, uh, uh, touch points for the employer. But if you've got the integration established, then it's very simple because the file feeds or the APIs will share that address. It will, I've entered it into the benefit admin platform and maybe even the broker's doing it. It's going to push to the COBRA system. It's going to push to that FSA plan that they're enrolled in. It's going to share it with the carriers. It's going to update payroll. So very simple uh, with one touch submit, of an address change, it can um, affect multiple um, uh, systems. It can remove the barrier to introduce benefits due to administrative burdens. How many times have you wanted to add some voluntary products and the employer pushes back? It's too much work. I have to handle too many enrollment forms. There's too many payroll deductions. Well, if you've got the voluntary benefits online and the payroll deductions being sent to payroll automatically, it really does ease that burden. It um, can improve employee management, productivity, engagement, and participation. If employees understand their benefits, if they can take the benefits online home and talk to their spouse about it, if there is different training and learning tools that are built into the system, it will definitely um, improve the morale and engagement of employees. And as I said before, everything in one place for the agency, the company, and the employee. So no need to go to all these different systems to try to access different data or information. Think about compliance, ACA. That can be challenging. If they're doing even an Excel spreadsheet, it can be very challenging. Why not integrate it with payroll? Have the payroll data every pay period be to an ACA solution updating the hours work, tracking the affordability. If you've got variable hour employees, it will track all the measurement periods. Very streamlined approach if you have the payroll integrated with the ACA solution. The COBRA, think about integrating COBRA administration with the Ben Admin platform. An employee enrolls in benefits. They make, they make selections, COBRA eligible benefits. It will automatically feed to the COBRA platform that will release or send out and mail the initial rights notice. Your clients are often missing that step. They think of COBRA for a terminated employee, not a new employee electing benefits. Well, that notice for the new employee enrolling in benefits goes out automatically. No need to worry about it. Same for the qualifying event letters. What about all the medical notices, the SPDs, if you're making that available online and um, having a notification requirement and a signature requirement, it handles all that so much simpler. We have non-discrimination testing. Non-discrimination testing not only for your 401k, but your FSAs, your HRAs, your, something as simple as your POP plan. You need to know who your key employees are, um, who your highly compensated employees are. Integration with the payroll data will simplify that too. And of course, the reporting. You've got W-2 reporting, certain things like your dependent care, your health savings accounts need to be reported on the W-2. You've got your 1095 uh, reporting as well. So just a couple compliance areas I mentioned. There are many more, but more of your common ones. And tying that in with technology simplifies all of it. 
your voluntary worksite products today, especially with um, high deductible health um, plans being, you know, pretty prominent in, in most regions of the country, we're seeing a lot of introduction to voluntary and worksite products to help um, manage that additional exposure. So gap policies, hospital indemnity, critical illness, cancer policies. The more options certainly meet the employee's needs better because they can pick and choose what they need, but it many times will increase the administrative burden. But with technology, it will reduce that administrative burden. Again, with more different so, um, um, products in place, it will help re uh, retain your employees and attract your employees. Because if you think about that workforce um, demographics that we talked about, three generations, with these different types of products that can be chosen, you're meeting the employer's needs. It will help you move up market. Usually larger groups require greater um, solutions, options. So that will help you move up market, which many of the brokers that we work with tell us they want to do. It helps in prospecting new clients. You're meeting the client's needs. You're having that business conversation. It will increase participation with technology, the, the different communication resources, the training resources, the tools, the calculators, all of that that's online will help the employees understand what they need and what they can afford. Some of the, um, the carriers are actually paying to get on these platforms because they look at it as shelf grab. So, you know, similar to a grocery store, you want that eye level shelf. Well, if we're having these carriers, the ability to expose their products to the employees, they think of that as a big win for them. And especially if there's decision support tools and so forth. So voluntary carriers sometimes will help offset the cost of technology if their products are on the technology shelves. Let's talk about HR and payroll. So many times as a broker, because you're focused on, on the medical or the products, you think of a technology solution as a Ben admin or a benefit enrollment. And I would implore you to consider it to be a lot more. It can actually have an incomplete employee life cycle. It can be from applicant tracking, finding employees, to onboarding new employees being hired, setting up direct deposit, tax forms, the I-9, all of that administrative burden of bringing on a new hire can be done before day one, before the employee even walks in the front door. And of course, the benefit enrollment, which is usually you know, um, the, the top of mind for everybody, and also training. In many states, there's training requirements, workers' comp, OSHA, safety, sexual harassment, that can be done uh, through technology as well. Document libraries, accessing all the employee handbooks, the policies, the procedures, the PTO, vacation, sick time, paid time off, administering that much more simply, accruing the time and deducting time taken. We already talked about the payroll, the, the feeds to payroll, benefit deductions. I make my elections. I may have a couple different voluntary products. It's based on you know, how much I wanted, my age, my dependents. If you've got the formulas working behind the scenes, much easier to administer. You come away with one deduction, payroll deduction, and that's fed automatically to the payroll as, as uh, time worked as well. The data feed from Ben Admin. Um, so payroll companies can share the salary information into a Ben Admin platform. The salary and payroll is going to be more accurate than the salary in a Ben Admin platform because you never forget to increase, decrease, stop paying, pay an employee. And if that salary is being shared and then they're electing life or disability, any type of salary-based benefit, that would be much more accurate in um, that as well. And of course, the pay stubs and tax um, information is available to employees through, um, through the payroll system. 
So let's talk about the competitive landscape. This is kind of, this is the fun part for me because I think it's really important to um, kind of share with everybody what's going on if you're, you know, not constantly watching this, which, you know, you've got so much more on your plate. I do like to point out your number one competition is yourself if you're not engaging with technology. So if you are not taking any action, and I call it analysis paralysis, if you're overanalyzing everything and not doing anything, or you can't let go of the old way of doing things, you are your worst um, competition. Second, brokers with technology solutions. You have many big agencies that have a department just addressing the technology, the consultation, the maintenance, the bill. Um, that's tough competition for you. Your tech-centric um, brokers like Namely and Gusto, this is an all-in-one solution that's providing payroll, HR, and benefits. And I'm going to talk about a couple here in a second and your national agencies that I um, already spoke about. Okay. I have many success stories of brokers using technology to gain new business. They use it as a prospecting tool and they are winning business. They are not winning business on products, they're winning business on solutions. There's something called the G2 grid. If you haven't seen it before, I just want to point it out to you. It's really quite interesting. I'll well, I think it's interesting. Um, it shows really who is winning the technology game, if you will. So if you take a look, and I apologize, it's small because there's a lot of information here. But you can see here that on the top right-hand quadrant, you have leaders. So these are the leaders in the technology space. And here is market presence on this access, okay, and satisfaction. So the best area to be is your top right-hand quadrant. I'm going to point out Gusto because we're going to be talking about them in a minute. So Gusto is here. Okay, You may recognize some other logos like ADP um, and Workday. And um, Ease down here is common, especially on the West Coast. So they get high performers and they have decent market presence, but maybe not as much as Gusto. Okay, Then... These are the companies that are trending right now, so really gaining momentum. So you can see here we've got Ease, which many of you may know, or Employee Navigator, which many of you may know. But we've also got the Gusto, okay? And I'm going to move over to this now and talk about uh, Gusto. So you know this logo. It's the old Zenefits logo. We all know that story, so I'm not going to rehash that. But here's another logo that you may or may not know. The name of this company is Namely. And Namely is an East Coast uh, technology solution. And they are um, pretty prevalent in maybe the um, mid-sized groups, I'll call it. Um, so you may not see them as much. Um, this company launched in 2012. They are privately held, but they have big money backing them. Um, so they're VC backed. They have about 157 million backing them. And just um, in August of last year, they got an additional 60 million. They're spending that money on marketing and technology. So it's tough to compete with how they're marketing. The next company I'm going to talk about is Gusto. And this is the one that I really want you to focus on because they tend to market to smaller groups. Their average size group is around 10. So you may have this mindset that smaller groups don't want technology, but I will tell you Gusto is proving that wrong. Um, and, you know, that was my mindset, too, until I really started uh, taking a look at this. They also started in 2012. They came from, um, so the payroll who was supporting Zenefits was called Zen Payroll. They started off as Zen Payroll. In 2015, they changed their name to Gusto. When they changed their name to Gusto, they actually got into the benefit arena, arena at that time. So they started becoming a broker. Today, they have 30 or 30, 300 million dollars in backing. And in the past, what is it, uh, 19, seven years? They've been in business for seven years. They have 100,000 clients, 100,000 clients. 
So I use this analogy, and you may have heard me say this or tired of me saying this, but I think it's re really relevant. Gusto is to you what Netflix was to Blockbuster. So Blockbuster was really worried about the cable company, okay? Like maybe you were worried about the payroll companies, like the paychecks and the ADP being a broker. Well, they never saw Netflix coming, and Netflix took them down. That's what I think that gusto is to our industry. We have something very new that has just recently gotten some press called Rippling. Rippling is owned and started by the former Zenefit CEO, Parker Conrad. It has been in business for about a year. They have about $52 million backing them. But what's different with them is they have a single sign-on for a complete employee management. So it goes far beyond what Namely and Gusto and ADP is doing. They actually have like Slack and Dropbox and all these different types of solutions around employee management and business management tied together. So keep your eyes and ears open for, for that. I just recently saw, by the way, something, I think it was on LinkedIn, that they said that they are working with brokers. So I would be a little cautious of that, especially with uh, who owns that. So let's take a look at three broker personalities. And I want you to think about where you are fitted or slotted in these three different personalities. We have analog, we have next gen, and we have automation. So analog is kind of the traditional way of doing things, focused on service, um, you know, maybe a couple of producers in the agency, medium-sized agencies, really less informed about technology. Know what's out there, not doing a whole lot with it. Then you have the next gen, and this actually is the maestro study as well, um, coming from that, um, that, that survey that was done. Your next gen broker is newer to the industry. They are more of your trusted advisor. They are the consultant. They may be working in smaller size agencies, much more flexibility and much more customization and um, um, consultation. They may be all, a little less proactive about advising on technology. So more so than the analog, the traditionalist that really is not informed, they're just not being as proactive as the automation. So the automation broker, and this, if you look at it, it's over half of the brokers are at this automation stage. They have innovative solutions. They're creative. They're thinking outside the box. They're, they are solving business uh, solutions or solving business problems. They're bringing solutions. They tend to be your larger agencies, maybe with more, more resources in-house. And they are strategically driving technology and automation. So where do you fit? You have a couple different options when you are considering technology. Do you bring it in-house? Do you have it in-house? Do you outsource it? Do you consult on it? Regardless of what you're doing, any of these are a right answer. You just need to make a choice. So bringing it in-house is really you are the person who's building it out. You own the data, which can be pretty powerful. You own the data. You control the data. You're building the platform. You're maintaining the platform. You're training the clients. But this takes quite a bit of resources and uh, dedicated support. The next option would be a consultant. So you may really you know, understand the industry and um, you are, you know, knowing that uh, you can't quite keep up, so you're going to use an outside party to be more of that true consultant role, which also is an um, option. So I'm calling that the tech consultant. They may have four or five different options that they can build out um, on your behalf. So they're fitting best solution that they have available to your client, but they own the data. You no longer own the data. They're building the platform. They're establishing the EDIs and the APIs. They're doing the training with your client. So they are the technology experts. They'll charge for this, but again, maybe that, that volunteer carrier can help offset that cost a little bit. And your last option is you truly are the consultant. 
so you understand everything, you're keeping up to date with everything that's going on, um, you are making best choices for your client based on their needs. You don't necessarily have to own a platform, so usually the client is purchasing it, but you're consulting saying, I recommend this. This is what you told me you need. This is the best fit for you. Okay, You probably will be granted access to the data, but the employer owns the data. Okay, They're contracting directly. So our last poll question, very quickly here. What type of broker do you consider yourself? We looked at three different, the analog, the next generation, and the automation. So are you the traditionalist, the analog? Are you the next gen that kind of knows about the technology, thinking about it, talking about it? Or are you automation, you're completely engaged, full bore ahead, put all your groups on? Hey, everybody answered that pretty quickly. We got about 50-50. Nobody on the call is analog, so that's awesome to see because we don't want to be the you know the old school not moving along with things. So I'm going to go ahead and close that out. All right. So let's talk about a complete ecosystem. So typically what we see is that a broker will start with a Ben Admin platform and they primarily focus, this is kind of the evolution that we see, I guess is the best way to put it. They're thinking of a Ben Admin portal as a benefit enrollment platform. Then they kind of, the concentration is, does it have carrier fees or does it not? If it doesn't have carrier fees, a lot of times that's where it stops. Again, think beyond just a carrier fee. These systems can do so much more. Then you start having these aha moments. I mean, I've seen this so many times. Gosh, if we add an, a COBRA admin, that helps with some of the compliance or the ACA admin, that if they're enrolling in benefits, it's automatically going to share it with the COBRA admin portal to generate that initial rights notice. Or if I'm terming somebody out the Ben admin portal, it's automatically going to send that qualifying event letter. And once you start um, using that system, I see most brokers will move their entire block over to that because it just makes so much sense. It's seamless. Then we start thinking about other solutions outside of just the carriers. Your FSA, your HSA, and your HRA administration can be integrated. So I'm enrolling in benefits as an employee and I have chosen an HSA plan and I want to put $50 aside each pay period and that will automatically establish an HSA account, set up the bank account, no need to go to a different system to do that. And then that information is going to be shared with the payroll, my $50 deduction, and any of the other cost sharing um, benefits, my medical, my dental, vision, all shared with the payroll, as is the hours work for all the variable hours here over your ACA, variable hour, your affordability, all that track because the payroll data is being sent to the ACA solution. And of course, if you've got hourly, it's nice not to have to key the hours that the employees are keying their own hours and that's pushing into payroll. And then we kind of get this aha moment that I can do a em complete employee life cycle and I can actually start with the applicant tracking, have that data feed into onboarding if we do extend an offer. And that employee demographic information is sent into onboarding. I don't have to key any of that. And the employee can take it upon themselves to do all their pre-employment paperwork, tax forms, direct deposit, I-9s, read the sign off on the employee handbook, whatever that onboarding process is. So that really does complete the, the ecosystem or the employee life cycle is what I call it, um, solution. All right, so we're going to finish up on just a couple key points to bring it home. Um, you can truly transform your agency with technology. Number one, in my opinion, is you're protecting your book of business. Um, there are a lot of people out there buying for your book of business, and you just heard about the, the venture capital, the marketing dollars, some of these, I'll call them tech-centric brokers like the Gusto and the Namely's have. You can certainly grow your business. You can move up market. You can also increase your revenue by offering more products 
but really it's not just to drive the revenue, it's to complete the entire benefit program to fit the, the three generations of the workforce. Reduce expenses, time, error, redundancies, and bottom line is meeting your client's needs. So with that, we are finished with this one hour CE, it's 50 minutes of CE. Again, please make sure that you sign out and sign in and sign out both, so two signatures, time in, time out, and send that sheet that you received by email to concierge at primepay.com. And I'm going to see, okay, there were a couple questions that I'm gonna answer. What is a SaaS? Um, it's Software as a Service, so that's what it stands for. Um, that stat you shared relative to where small business spend on digitized services, where are those stats coming from? Um, that was the Guardian study, and it was on the bottom right-hand corner. We can get this presentation out to you. It was the fifth annual Guardian uh, study. What is the difference between EDI and API? That's a great question. API is a real-time data exchange. So, for example, if I am changing an address within payroll, it is automatically within seconds fed over to the Ben Admin uh, platform. Where an EDI is a file feed, so that exchange, there needs to be some pushing of that data and it's usually to a secure FTP site, and that data is captured and uploaded into the other system. So it's not automatic. It could be overnight, it could be daily, it could be weekly, depending on the frequency that's established. So not real time. And I think that was all the questions that we have. So thanks for your time. I know it's getting to be the busy season. We'll get these certificates out to you once we see that you completed the three poll questions and you have your sign in, sign out sheets back to us. Have a great day, everyone. Thanks everybody. And I'll be sure to get you out a copy of the slide deck as well when I send over the certificates.